Hi, in this video, let's look at uh, what is ideal gas and uh, what's the difference between ideal gas and real gas. We know that the equation of state for an ideal gas is PV equals nRT, where n stands for the number of particles or typically moles of the substance. But uh, in the case of uh, ideal gas, we make some assumptions. One of the main assumptions is that there are no intramolecular forces between the molecules of the substance, which means there are no forces of attraction, repulsion that uh, take place between the molecules in an ideal gas. So because there are no intramolecular forces, what happens is in ideal gases, the internal energy is only because to the mo attributed to the motion of the molecules or the movement because of the kinetic energy. Because when two particles are close to each other, if there is an intramolecular force and then we move them away from each other, let's say there are two particles and there is an intramolecular force existing between them. And then when I pull the one object away from each other, I increase the potential energy. Now if we assume there are no intramolecular forces when they are close to each other or far away from each other, then all the energy inside the gas is attributed only to the kinetic energy of the gas. That means all internal energy is because of kinetic energy. That is because of this assumption, we assume that, you know, there are no intramolecular forces. We come to this conclusion that all energy is only kinetic energy. All internal energy is only kinetic energy. And uh, because there are no intramolecular forces, the particles are able to move about randomly uh, in a random fashion without any forces of attraction or repulsion. So, if there are many particles, they move you know, far away here. But then between them, we assume that there is no intramolecular forces, right? So, because of that, the substance is able to exist in a gaseous state only. Because when, when let's say I liquefy the gas, then there have to be some restricted motion. They come close to each other and there are some intramolecular forces definitely in play. We cannot assume that there is no forces between the molecules. So, if because there are, there are no intramolecular forces, theoretically, we can say that it's not possible to liquefy the gas because the moment I liquefy the gas, there are some forces of attraction between the molecules. They come closer to each other and there is the complete free random motion is not possible. So, hence theoretically, it's not possible to liquefy an ideal gas. So, two things. One is the internal energy is only kinetic energy and then it's not possible to liquefy the gas. These kind of assumptions are there. Uh, because of the root assumption, then there is no intramolecular forces. But that is not correct. In the real gas, there are intramolecular forces. When the molecules are closer to each other, there is some force of repulsion between them. And sometimes when they are away from each other at a certain distance, there is a weak force of attraction also between them because of which they form certain groups of molecules and so on and so forth. So, in a nutshell, the real gas does have some intramolecular forces of attraction. Now, let's uh, study this behavior further as shown in this uh, plot here. And uh, let's see this graph. If we take one mole of a real gas, let's say we take one mole of a real gas and we have a plot of pressure with PV by RT, which is nothing but N or the number of moles we can say. So, for if we plot this for one mole of a gas, then ideally this should stay at one mole, right? Or 1.0. Zero. I can say this dotted line you see here is at 1. Maybe this is 2 and 3 and so on and so forth. But if the gas is ideal as per our assumptions, it should not deviate from 1 because I am plotting it for 1 mole of a gas and then uh, it should not deviate from this dotted line. But what happens when we increase the pressure? As the pressure increases, you see that all the different colored lines that I have plotted here are deviating away from the ideal gas behavior. So, which means when the pressure is increased, they move farther away from ideal gas. That is, this N keeps increasing on this side. 
But one other thing that we notice here is when the temperature is low, the deviation is very high from the dotted line, which means when the pressure is high and the temperature is low, it gets liquefied. The gas gets liquefied and it has been proven it's possible. So that's why you see more particles or more moles, the number of moles increases. And uh, that's the logical explanation why N goes up in the plot. This y axis goes, the value goes up. So at high pressure and low temperature, uh, we see liquefaction, uh, the, the substance gets liquefied, and hence there is a huge deviation from the dotted line. But the same plot, we can see that under high pressure, but if the temperature is very high also, then the deviation is not as much. We come closer to the dotted line. We increase the pressure, but then we increase the temperature also. Then the behavior of the gas stays close to the ideal gas. Even better, when the pressure is low, pressure is in these ranges, and the temperature is high, then low pressure and high temperature is when you see the green line here is closest to the dotted line. So in this segment, in this area. So the green line is as close as possible to the dotted line, which means the real gas behaves like an ideal gas under these conditions, low pressure and high temperature. Thank you.